Hey folks, my name is Tanner Reed. I'm a product design evangelist at Autodesk. And today we're going to be showing you how to make customized materials in Fusion 360 using patterns that you've made in Adobe Illustrator. So we'll jump right in. So what you want to start with is this bathtub. It's a pretty basic model, um, sort of like a luxury bathtub concept. And the idea that we want with this is to get a render of it in a room, so like in a bathroom against a wall. Um, the idea is to make it sort of like this render that we have here. Uh, we've got a floor made out of hardwood, a uh, baseboard, and a wallpaper that's sort of like a modern lined kind of wallpaper. Um, and we want it to be able to be this customized pattern that Fusion doesn't actually provide. You know, Fusion provides wood, you know, uh, leather and cloth, all that good stuff, but it doesn't have, you know, custom wallpapers. And so I'm going to show you how to make this wallpaper in Illustrator and then bring that into Fusion to customize your materials to put it on the wall, along with the texture that you can see there. So um, to do this, I'm going to start off in Fusion um, with a uh, room that I've created, so I'm just going to show that for you. And this room is basically just three or four different boxes that I've put into the environment, built it off the bathtub. And so we've got a floor that's got some hardwood going across it. We've got some white baseboard, a white wall behind it, and finally a ceiling that I've made orange so that it can get sort of like a, a warm light coming off the top. But I think for this render, we don't actually need that ceiling, so I'm just going to turn it off for now. And, uh, and then we're going to get a better look here about the framing. So I'll just move this bathtub, you know, into place where I want it, just like that. And now I want to concentrate on actually putting the wallpaper on the backdrop. So if I open up Appearances, um, if you've used these Appearances before, you'll know that down here in the library, there's a whole bunch of materials that Fusion gives you and that you can download additional materials for that you drag and drop onto the model. And if you're dragging and dropping, eventually that, not eventually, when you drag and drop, that material is going to show up on the In This Design panel, which is basically like a swatch, so you can add it to other, other uh, pieces of the product as well. And so what we want to do is be able to have a material that is customized and made in Illustrator. So I'm going to go over to Illustrator real fast, and we're going to take a look at that. This is the final pattern that I've, um, uh, that I've made for the wall, and I'll show you a little quick here of how I went through making that. But basically, I just repeated randomized lines across the, uh, across the face of this white square, that I've made in Illustrator as an artboard. And as I go across, I'm just making sure that, you know, every time a line touches the top of this, it's also going to start in at the bottom at that same place. That way when it mirrors it, in, not mirrors it, but stacks it in Fusion, it's going to give you a pattern that's not repeating and that you can't see the lines going across. Um, and this is really key. There's, and there's a lot of ways to make these wallpapers. Um, I just use the line tool here to make a few of these. Um, you can also go in and make shapes like this honeycomb shape that I made as another example. It's a pretty basic kind of bold pattern of, you know, a gray honeycomb shape with these, um, uh, I guess, mint kind of green stripe going across them. And the key here to make this pattern well is that I've cut off the edges here so that, you know, this thickness on this left side is half the thickness of this, of the, of the honeycomb thickness. That way, when these stack on each other, they'll form a full thick line for the honeycomb. Uh, but the key here when you're doing this is to save this out correctly. So once you've got your square, I want to go up to file and I want to say export. And when I go to export, I want to choose under here, um, uh, let's see, I want to give it a name. I want to give this, uh, let's say, lined wallpaper. And I want to make it a PNG. Fusion will accept a few different file types, but I think PNGs are always pretty safe. Um, the key thing you should do right now is choose use artboards. So when you make this artboard in Illustrator, um, it's a square. When you first make the file, it'll ask you and you can say make it a square. Um, is it's going to save everything inside of that artboard. So if you're looking over here, you know, we've got these lines that are in here and those are our artwork. If we didn't click on use artboards, it would actually save up to the edge of this line instead of keeping that, that gap there. So, you know, if you picture that repeating across in Fusion, that's going to give you like some double thick lines where these two meet and we don't want that. So um, make sure you say use artboards. If you've got multiple ones, make sure you choose the one that you want there in range. And I can say export. And when I go through, just make sure the resolution is good. I want to change my background color to white. Um, and then I can say OK. And once I've done that, I can go back over to Fusion. And in here, I'm going to start by picking a texture that I like. So I've gone through a few of them. I know that leather looks pretty good. I like the, I like the look of that texture. So I'm going to go into leather on the library here. And I'm going to choose leather matte yellow. doesn't matter what color it is. We're going to be replacing that anyways. Um, but if you look now, it shows up here on the swatch. And it's called leather matte yellow. If I double click this, I can give it a new name. I'm going to call this one Lined Wallpaper. And if we play with the scale a little bit, I'm going to bring it up to an extreme so you can see that texture there. 
that's the texture of wallpaper that we're going to be using. So or the one that I would like to use. And so I'm going to bring that down to more, you know, reasonable scale. But when I go to advanced, this is where I can actually replace the image that it's using to line up uh, the pattern there. So on here, it gives you a lot of different things that you can play with. You can play with the reflectance, the roughness, you know, if it's emitting light, all that good stuff. But if you click on this image here, it's going to bring up a panel that lets you edit the actual image that's being patterned. And I can also choose its source. So here, this little blue line of text there, that's the source file. I'm going to go in and change this to lined wallpaper and say open. And now you'll see that it's put in the wallpaper um, where it used to be previously on, uh, on this leather kind of color. So in here, you can change a lot of things, the offset of position. I think they're fine. I don't want to change them too much. You can change the rotation a little bit, which is kind of nice. Maybe we'll make this sort of like a, kind of like a rain, like a, you know, rain in the wind kind of pattern there. I like that. Um, and then on here, you can also change your sample size. So I can say that this is actually going to be on a 10 inch by 10 inch um, basis on that, you know, that, you know, each square that we've made is 10 inches by 10 inches. Um, and so then I can say done. That looks good to me. Uh, then I can say, okay, here. But now one key thing to note is that, um, this pattern is a little bit big right now. Um, so if I opened it up, you know, I'd like to scale it down a little bit to get it a little bit smaller, um, in relation to the bathtub, but I've also lost the texture a little bit, which is kind of a problem. So like if I zoom up here, you can start to see that texture a little bit better. Like that's probably a little bit too much. Maybe like 90% is the texture size that I want. So I can use the scale button now to make the texture the size. But if I go into advanced, I can then open up the, uh, the image editor again on the wallpaper. And I can change this one now from 10 to let's say maybe like four by four. And that's still a bit more like maybe, th let's do three. Three by, not 34, <laughs> three by three. And that looks pretty good to me. Um, let's do 3.5. I'm picky, sorry. 3.5. Um, then we'll say done. And now we've got the pattern and the texture, both proportionally the sizes that we want. So I can now say, okay, that's great. But I can go ahead and start ray tracing. So once that looks good, like that's, that's looking like what I expect it to be, I'm going to hit disable and then I can take that straight to the cloud rendering environment using the cloud rendering tool. And if you haven't used this yet, you can choose your image size, your aspect ratio, your width and your height, all that good stuff, change your quality and hit start rendering. And then it's going to take it to the cloud and render it. And if we open it up here, you can get a good example. I've kind of pre-baked one already for us, but if we, and there it is. So you can see the, uh, the background that we've made for it. That looks great. I'm happy. Um, and just to give you one more example of, of, of how you can change things on the appearances, I'm going to go back to the appearance uh, panel here. And I'm going to go ahead and replace this lined wallpaper with the other example that I made for y'all, um, the one with the hexagonal uh, honeycomb shapes. So if I come in here, I can take this one that I've made, um, which is lined wallpaper. So I can take this lined wallpaper that I've made, and if I right click it, I can say duplicate. And duplicate will copy that lined wallpaper, and I can double click on it. I can rename this honeycomb. And under advanced, I can go in and choose uh, the same process we did before. So I can change this image to the honeycomb image, which is here. Open. And I can say OK. And then I can click and drag over. And if we look now, we got a couple of problems with this. One is that it's at an angle. So if I come in here, I can go ahead and change that angle back to zero. And but if we look here, I've got sort of like a stretched out vertically honeycomb, which is it was supposed to be a square honeycomb. So I made a mistake in Illustrator. Obviously, I didn't make a square artboard for this one. I made a rectangular one, um, but that's not a problem. In Fusion, you can correct these things that you've made a mistake on in Illustrator by clicking on the sample size here and changing it. So if I change this little constraint button there, I can come in here and say maybe eight inches by seven inches and see if that fixes the problem. It does pretty well. That looks good. And then I can say done and OK. And now we've got our second wallpaper that's sort of like a you know modern kind of bold honeycomb shape. 
And just to show you an example of me turning on the roof and looking at a rendering in Fusion. Um, so this is the final render here. Um, you can see it, it's on the cloud, it looks really nice, exactly as you would expect. And you can always download this by clicking on the download buttons there. And that's it for me. Um, thanks for joining. If you have any questions, feel free to tweet me at Tanner S. Reed on Twitter. Um, there's also some links below for some great resources for you to keep going with Fusion. Um, the learning resources page on Fusion is a really great documentation of all the tools in Fusion. Um, the community forums are a great place to ask questions or find answers to questions or engage with other people who are working on stuff. Great community there. Um, and we always encourage you to upload your stuff to the Fusion 360 gallery. Um, this is a great place to show off what you've been working on. It's a great community to like, you know, give feedback, get comments, um, sort of like an online portfolio. It's a really great spot. So feel free to go there as well. And I hope to see you soon. Thanks.